الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كلام المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم انما يعمر مساجد الله من امن بالله واليوم الاخر امنت بالله صدق الله مولانا العظيم قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم انما الاعمال بالخواتيم او كما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام i welcome you for those who are attending here and for those who are at home with the greeting of islam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh May the blessings of Allah Almighty be upon each and every single one of you, your families and our communities at large. And it's with deep sadness that I sit here today. We are on a normal Friday. We would have had the finishing of the first Jama'ah and we would have seen certain members leave as they normally do, which is a habit or a a tradition or a consistent act of worship as I like to call it for the last 30-35 years and within that unfortunately there's a sad piece of news for each and every single person here as an individual but also this masjid and also and mainly this community at large whereby we were given the sad news of the death of our senior Imam and it feels somewhat odd to acknowledge him as Marhum, i.e. a person who is no longer here, Alama Imam Ghafoor Ahmed Chisti Sahib Rahimahullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with you. Amen. So as you all know, fortunately he passed away in the later hours of last evening or yesterday night. He is someone who has been serving in this masjid for 30, 35 years and I, I myself came here 21 years ago and I still remember him as at that time who was somebody who had already been serving for a number of years and 21 years later he still, till yesterday, served this mosque, served this masjid, served the cause of Allah Almighty the da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam i.e. the religion of Islam till his last moment we start by remembering him and acknowledging that inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun indeed we all belong to Allah and no doubt the only place of return is back to Allah but there needs to be something that you and I take from his life in terms of his or the things that he did and how do we then go on to honour his legacy moving forward? It would be, or it would deem absolutely pointless that if somebody, especially a pillar of the community, was to leave us, and then you and I, or our communities at a large, certain individual, or even all of us, we feel nothing, or nothing happens off the back of it, or there's something, or nothing regulates or is disturbed in our system or our hearts. And this is something really to reflect on. I mentioned an ayah of the Quran where Allah Almighty brings attention to certain types of people in Surah Tawbah. He says, "Inna ma yahmuru masajid Allah man amana billahi bil yawm al akhir." And in short, the explanation of this ayah of the Quran is that those people who build or who have connection or who move forward the cause of the mosque, i.e. the house of Allah, are surely or can only be the people 
of piety, i.e. taqwa, the people of Islam, the people of charity, basically the people who are chosen. In short, the people who are chosen. And we can look across the board and we can find so many people who have already passed away, whether that's within our families or the people that we know within our communities. And you'll find that some don't fit into this category at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them also. Then we find some that somewhat fit into the category. They come in and out. They're here sometimes. A bit of both. The 50-50s as I call them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them also. But very few, and this is the point that I'm trying to make. Very few. One in a million as they say. Would you find that somebody is 110% connected to the cause of the house of Allah Almighty. And no doubt this was our Imam. Allah Rachis Tisar. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the highest status in Jannah. And then I went to mention a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he talks about the a'mal, i.e. The, act, the actions, the acts of worship. And there's different categories and there's different conditions in terms of acceptance of these various types of worship. And the theme of this particular narration is when the Prophet was bringing attention to how do we identify if a person or if an a'mal or if a certain situation or a story, how do we know that the overall was good? You know, in life, we have good moments, we have bad moments, we have ups, we have downs. But to generalize at the end, to give a final verdict, what's the shortcut? What's this one golden rule that we can take to determine whether a person or a particular example was good or bad? And the Prophet of Allah says, that the actions look at the ending. And this is something that resonates in today's life as well. You have somebody who does something or somebody who does good acts, good acts, good acts. And then right at the end, they make a mistake. What do you remember the most? That, that mistake. mistake yes. Or somebody who does bad, 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 and right at the end, he asks Allah for forgiveness, and he changes, and he comes to the path of Allah. What do we remember him for? What do we remember him for? That final moment. Because you know what we say, the brother changed, mashallah, he came to the deen, he started to read namaz. So we look at the ending of a person's life, and let me remind you of his ending. And sometimes we hear stories that such and such told me, this person told me, and I heard from so and so and so and so. I was due to meet this disciple today at 9 o'clock in the morning. Myself. We were supposed to discuss the Ramadan timetable and the Masjid timetable. And we have a WhatsApp group within the mosque. And he put a voice note on that WhatsApp group, I think about 6 o'clock in the evening yesterday, or maybe before. And he was telling the members of the group that I'm not feeling too well. I've got Bukhar, this is the exact word. That I've got fever and I don't think I'll be able to make it for Asr al Maghrib or Maghrib al Isha. Two of the Salahs. And the first worry of his mind was who's going to lead the Jama'ah in the house of Allah? And he allocated somebody to take forward the Jama'ah. And he said, I will try my best to make it back for Fajr. He went to sleep at 9 o'clock with the intention, and remember what I said about the Prophet wasallam alluding to the final portion of one's action. With the intention to wake up at 10 o'clock so he can make the Dhikr Adhkar and he can read Salah because yesterday night, as we know, was the 15th night of Shaban. So this was his ending. Worried about the house of Allah. Intention, read Salah, please Allah. Stay awake for the night so I can talk to Allah. All his ending was good. And we all know from here, every single person knows how many years he has served this community. You know, there's a saying, there's an analogy, every fiber of the carpet in these halls will smell his fragrance. Because I promise you, he may have walked in every single masala, he probably has made sujood in every single masala in this masjid. Even the library will remember him. This was a man of Allah. 
And I finally we finish with this. Now, you know, we hear that on the Day of Judgment, it's going to be a harsh event for those who are not successful. And Allah Ta'ala throughout the Qur'an and even through various examples of the Prophet Sallallahu reminds us of these examples of mercy, i.e. some chances of hope. That there will be certain situations, certain things or people that have done certain things that will then invoke the mercy of Allah. And one of the things that I remember that comes to my mind is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says amongst the people or amongst the people on the day of judgment when the sun will be brought closest to one's head some say an arm span, some say a hand span but very close and everybody will be in a state of disturbance, a state of fear this is you and I, we will be the same and there will be seven groups of people who will find Mercy under the shade of Allah, protection from this heat. And I'd like to draw attention to two of the seven. One of them was that young person who spent his youth in the remembrance of the worship being connected with the cause of Allah Almighty. This man came to this country young. He served as a young Imam. And then he went on and he went on and he went on and he saw elderly age and he was still an imam, somebody who served, connected to the house of Allah, connected to the cause, the deen of Allah Almighty and the Prophet And then the final and most important one, which directly alludes to him and people like him, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, is that person who used to have this disturbance in his heart, who used to have this fikr, who used to have this worry, who used to have this focus on what? The house of Allah, i.e. that person who was connected with the mosque, who was the person who was bothered about the struggles, the challenges, the successes, the learning curves of the masjid. Why? Because it's the house of Allah. And he was both. And the message that I leave every single person here with today is the fact that he's gone now. But what do you and I do? Remember I said at the beginning, it's pointless if you sit here and talk about him and take nothing back. Today we'll be left a gap in the legacy or in our community from the passing of one single magnificent soul. But every single person here, I see people in today's crowd that saw me as a child. I see loads of people here today. Wallahi, you've seen me as a child grow up. And he has seen you as a child grow up. And there's a part of Tisti Sahib in each and every single one of you. I guarantee you. Whether you knew him personally, whether you read Sabak with him in the 90s, whether you had conversation with him when he's walking from Brighton Road to Ambazid Road, Salah after Salah after Salah, or whether you prayed behind him in Jumu'ah, for Eid, for Taraweeh, for your daily Salah. Somehow there is some part of his legacy inside you today. Yes, so if there's anything good in you and I, he has something to do with it. So my first request, make dua for him. And secondly, try and take something from his life. You know these elderly people, when they leave us, we lose so much. But lucky, smart, intellectual are those who take from their memory certain attributes. And one of the things that he was, no doubt, he was connected to the house of Allah. He was the leader within the house of Allah. So use this as a lesson for you and I. That Ramadan is coming. A fantastic opportunity passes us quick. He didn't think... I doubt he thought he would be here yesterday as his last evening on earth. He probably made intention and even preparation to lead Jummah today. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him. And one day that call will come to you and I. That's the only guarantee in life that that call is coming. The only variable is the fact that when is that call coming. But I promise you my brothers, my sisters, that call is coming. And we see today we're remembering him in a positive light. We need to ask ourselves the question. How are we going to be remembered? Will people talk good about us or will people talk bad about us? So use the legacy of his life, the examples of his life, take it in you, and you and I both know, or all know, what's in us that's from him, nurture that. 
this fruit or this plant, water it, look after it, let it grow into something good that serves you and your family. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his desire a high status in the Jannah. Amen. May he forgive him for his shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give strength to sabr in this difficult time to his family, Amen. his sons, his children, his daughters, his, uh, his wife and all the people that he leaves behind including his brother. And may he give you and I the ability to do justice to his name. And to do the good work that he left behind, let us carry on.